Alright, hey guys, it's me Alex, and I'm gonna be giving away a trading system that I used to use quite frequently. It was actually my main system for a bit, but I got a new one that's a lot more profitable and lucrative. So, I just figured I'm gonna give this one away, because, I mean, at this point, I don't have any use for it, and it's really not providing any return for me. It's not something I feel comfortable using for income, but I'm gonna give it away. And I'm gonna tell you, in my back tests, trading on a daily time frame with four to one leverage, not volatility targeting, just cause uh, that's a bit too much for most people to understand, unless you have a little bit of quantitative finance knowledge. But I'm posting this on Forex Factory, so I don't assume people to know what volatility targeting is. So I'm just going to refer to it through the leveraged backtest results, which on a daily time frame, 4 to 1 leverage was 15 to 30%, 30% during times where there's higher volatility, and 15% during regular times where there's lower volatility. Now, the uh, model itself is a linear model, and it is co-integration, co-integrated pairs trading, which basically what that means is that two assets move together, and they work with each other to move. So if one rises, you can anticipate another to rise, and you can actually anticipate one to rise if so if basically based on this model if silver rises a dollar according to this model gold should rise seventy dollars just based on this slope coefficient which is 70 and that's how it was calculated i took price of gold and i divided each column by the price of silver and let me just verify that that's what that function actually does. But uh, yeah, that's right. So basically, if you want to compare how far out a the asset has moved from the line, you would take the price of gold and divide it by the price of silver, and then compare it with the slope coefficient. And this is on a daily time frame, so this is sampled daily for something like 45 days. And it charts it right here with two standard deviations confidence, which is what these lines mean. So basically, if this bottom part here is above the line, or this part, top part here is below the line, you can anticipate it to be within confidence intervals. And let me search normal distribution just to show you the probability since it's based on the normal Gaussian distribution since that's just the simplest one I don't want to have to use somewhat distribution people aren't going to be comfortable with but basically two standard deviations out is essentially guaranteed that it's going to happen according to the normal distribution now uh, the normal distribution is not an accurate distribution when it comes to financial markets. It just isn't, and I don't recommend using it. And I don't recommend using this strategy. I just am saying that this is for educational purposes for you to learn. Now, intraday, if you have very high leverage or very high volatility, uh, I think I was targeting... It was like 25 or 50 percent annualized just horribly dangerous but i don't have a large account balance so it's not really that much to me if i lose a couple hundred bucks you know it might be 20 percent of what i have but at the end of the day it's not that much money as dollar figures go if i had a larger account balance i would definitely have a much lower volatility target um so <clears throat> Uh, anyways, if this line, if this dot here is below here, you can expect 
I think it's like 97% chance according to the normal distribution. Now, again, normal distribution, not the best distribution. I recommend a different one being used, but that's whatever. So, anyways. These, the further this dot gets from the line, basically the higher of a chance it's going to, or the more money you can make when it goes back to this line, which is where the price technically should be. So say this dot right here, what happened was silver went way too high and gold didn't go high enough. So there's two possible outcomes that really can happen. Silver can go back down, gold can go up, or a combination of the two. But eventually it can be anticipated that this line, it will go back to this line right here. And now I'm gonna say that it doesn't always because sometimes the slope coefficient will change, which means that this line will either get steeper or less steep, depending on your sample size. And so there is a possibility of make, losing money, which is if the slope changes faster than profit can be made. So basically, if you continue to lose money, which the way you enter a trade, so if silver goes too high and gold isn't high enough, what you would do is you would sell short silver and buy gold. And since they're both highly correlated, your volatility will be reduced and you will make money whether silver goes back down or gold goes back up or some combination of the two. It hedges you since it's uncertain whether silver is going to go back down or gold will go back up. It is based on this model certain that it will go back to the line. Now, as I said, that assumes slope is constant. If slope is constant, then it is certain it will go back to the line and it is certain profit will be made. But in the real world, the slope is not constant. The slope changes. So it is not certain you will make money. And I should say this, with this model, what I have found is there is lots of little gains and the occasional large loss. And that large loss typically comes due to a news event, which is why when there's a news event, you aren't going to want to run this model. On Fed days, I wouldn't run this model. I would just let it sit off. I would close my trades. And I should also say that if you want a list of correlated currencies, go based on regionality, not based on underlying commodities or factors. So like two good pairs to try is the euro and the British pound, which they're both in the same region and thus they have a tendency to move with each other and cause each other to move. So some other ones, the ones I used, the one that I was trading, US dollar Swedish krona, which is, this is the program that I wrote to trade everything in. I even have a back tester so that I can optimize. Now, Swedish krona, Danish krona, both work well due to regionality. Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar work well. They're both co-integrated due to regionality and underlying commodities that the country exports. So I'm going to add those to my list of currencies that I say work, that I've found to work. Other ones that work well, Euro USD and US dollar Swiss franc, although you can expect the correlation to be inversed just because the dollar is the first currency and the quoting currency are opposites. You, you know what I mean. At least hopefully you should. So now New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Uh, other ones is USD CID and USD MXN. This actually works somewhat well intraday, which is surprising since Mexican peso is a bit uh, high spreads especially with my broker, Oanda, which, I mean, it sucks, because Oanda, uh, they have guaranteed liquidity, which is nice, but just personally, the high spreads on emerging markets is killer. Honestly, I don't care about developed markets, like Euro, 
British Pound, Aussie, New Zealand. The ones that really kill me are things like the Peso, Turkish Lira, South African Rand, which I actually trade a lot in the emerging markets, so that's a bit of a pain, and I really don't like that about my broker. I know a lot of people say that I don't say enough bad about Oanda, and I'm going to say that that's definitely something I don't like about Oanda. <laughs> um, now, let me continue. Oh yeah, obviously, USDCNH and USDCNY. Those are obviously going to work, and you don't even have to do math to find the slope. All you have to do is one, just one. That's going to be the slope. Don't even do the math. Just trust me, because if you're smart enough, you'll figure out why they're going to have the same value. So, what was the other ones? Gold and silver, obviously. Whether or not you consider them currencies or metals. Um, let me think. Obviously, different contracts of crude futures are going to have this. So, like... WTI, USD, and then say UK oil. I'll just do US oil, UK oil, since that's how it's usually said for CFDs, which is what most people on Forex Factory trade. Although I don't recommend CFDs, I would honestly much more prefer futures. The only problem is scalability isn't the best, but I definitely do not like a lot of things about CFDs. Just don't like at all. Um, anyways, so I, I think this is a good enough list of assets that work with it. Now, the way correlation is calculated is covariance over the square root of variance times variance. For more, look up Pearson product correlation coefficient. I'll actually look that up real quick for you. Product moment correlation. Um, let me find the equation. Okay, this is, yeah, this is the equation, and I don't know if you if you want uh, want to calculate it yourself. It's easier in Excel because you can just do covariance. Here, I'll have it for a second. Just pause it. Covariance over row one and row two, square root variance. Slope. This is easy to calculate for a linear model. Basically, I'm gonna do it real quick for you. Okay, so we're going to change this not, I don't want it as a percentage, I want it as a dollar figure. I don't want a dollar symbol though. Fuck. Or crap. I shouldn't have used vulgarities. Sorry about that. That makes it not advertiser friendly. So that's always a problem. Although I don't make any money off this channel, so I don't know why I care. I'm just doing this for fun. <sighs> Average. So uh, it's actually $71 or 71.37. So multiply at current. You're going to want to recalculate this. And you're going to want to set sample size. But you're going to want to multiply silver's price by 71.37 in this case, or whatever it is for your case. So that's going to be the slope. And when it gets too high, which for this one, as I said, two standard deviations is a good enough threshold, I think. You can do one standard deviation if you're a little riskier. I don't know, but I would say two standard deviations. I didn't set a specific standard deviation. I would just have a back tester genetically optimize, which genetics optimization is a form of machine learning. And I just had it do that for me to recompute everything. All right. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe if you like my content. I want to put out more content in the future. I also have, anyways, these are the pairs you want to try this with. Work fairly well. I should say the dollar Canadian, dollar peso, big problem is one's emerging market, one is Canadian dollar. So you're gonna have to worry about emerging markets on this one. You have unhedged EM exposure. So I don't know if you would want to do this. And like I said, this is not financial advice. It's not 
intended to you're not I don't want you to trade with this advice I don't want you to sue me if you lose money either um, let me think what else do I gotta say this is educational purposes only alright thanks for watching I'm gonna cut the video right now